In January of 2024, I got the shock of my life. A routine blood test revealed I had possible early stage kidney disease. I couldn't understand why. I have no family history of kidney issues, no diabetes, a whole load of blood tests and ultrasounds followed, and I was still none the wiser. The only new thing I'd added to my routine was the creatine I'd been taking to maximize my performance in the gym. But I knew creatine was safe. Isn't it? Creatine. 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 This has gotten so popular. So some experts call this the Michael Jordan of supplementation. Before I explain what had happened to my kidneys, I need to explain why I was taking creatine in the first place. Creatine is one of the most effective supplements you can take to improve physical performance. It works by increasing the amount of your body's cellular fuel source, adenosine triphosphate. Crucially, it does this for anaerobic exercise like resistance training, sprinting, or any kind of high intensity exercise. So by taking creatine, you might find you can lift a heavy weight, do a couple more reps, or sprint just that little bit easier. We also know creatine helps to speed up recovery from particularly intense exercise. The good news is that we naturally make creatine in the body and if you eat meat, you're consuming creatine with every burger. But to get the recommended five grams per day, you'd need to eat about one kilogram of meat, probably too much for even the most enthusiastic of carnivores. So supplementing five grams of creatine per day is a great option for anyone looking to maximize their performance, even people who eat meat, but especially for anyone who doesn't. So it's not for everyone, but if you're taking your training seriously, it might be worth taking. On the other hand, creatinine is a waste product that is produced from the breakdown of creatine and leaves the body in your golden waterfall. Too much creatinine in the blood indicates the kidneys aren't doing their job of filtering impurities and this is used often as a marker of kidney health. This is why I was so alarmed by my blood test results, although as I'll explain in a minute, there's more to those results than meet the eye. So why is there so much controversy about creatine? When I asked my subscribers, i.e. you, what they wanted to know about creatine, there was no shortage of questions. So let's take a look at some of them now. First up, Raging Cookie 127 wants to know a science-backed take on whether creatine causes hair loss. Raging Cookie is right to point out that pretty much anything you see or read online about this issue is anecdotal. You may well have noticed your hair fell out after taking creatine and even grew back when you stopped. But if you check Tyler Vegan's Spurious Correlations website, you'll see that as the popularity of Dumb Ways to Die meme rose and fell between 2011 and 2018, so did the number of electronic engineers in Utah. Just because two things happen to be very close to each other in time doesn't mean one caused the other. So where does the idea of creatine causing hair loss come from? A very small study in 2009 found that rugby players who were supplementing creatine experienced increased levels of DHT in their blood. As DHT is known to cause loss of hair follicles, the creatine leads to hair loss hypothesis was started. However, this study had all sorts of problems. Not only have these findings not been replicated in any study published in the meantime, but the participants in this study only had their levels of DHT in the blood measured, not the levels in the actual hair follicles, where it has its action. So there's no evidence to suggest that creatine causes hair loss. Is it me or has it just gone cold in here? Okay, so TAAW1 asks, does it affect kidney function? Is it associated with elevated blood creatinine? The short answer is yes, but there's some nuance there and this is really why I was so worried about my own results. As creatinine is a waste product produced by the breakdown of creatine, increased creatine intake may cause increased creatinine levels in the blood. Hope that makes sense. Because EGFR, a measure of how healthy your kidneys are, is calculated with an equation that takes creatinine levels into account, there is a direct negative correlation between levels of creatinine and EGFR. As creatinine goes up, EGFR goes down. The assumption is that the only reason creatinine levels could be high is because the kidneys aren't working properly and that's what's got me so worried. But that was just an illusion. EGFR is calculated using an equation that includes creatinine levels. Creatinine levels may rise because of creatine supplementation or any of these other factors, but none of them necessarily affect your kidneys. It took my mum, who's also a doctor by the way, to send me a few papers on this phenomenon of creatine causing false positives in the blood to shake me out of my worrying frenzy. When I used a more valid test called cystatin C, I saw that my kidneys were actually functioning at a healthy level. Which, if nothing else, proves that mums do always know better, no matter how much research you've done. So if you're supplementing creatine or are concerned about the health of your kidneys in any way, please let your doctor know. I'm still taking creatine today and I'm very happy to report my kidneys are working just fine. 
This myth of creatine causing kidney damage is certainly pervasive. But as the authors of this comprehensive review of research on creatine supplementation noted, if creatine did cause kidney problems, we'd expect to see many cases of it in people who wouldn't normally get it, i.e. young, healthy individuals who do more than the average amount of exercise. However, no such evidence exists. As for taking creatine when you have pre-existing kidney problems, it's less clear. We simply don't have enough long-term data to state whether taking creatine at the same time as having mild or moderate kidney failure is beneficial or not. Anyone with any degree of kidney failure should already be receiving treatment from a kidney specialist and they'd want to discuss the relative risk-reward ratio with their doctor before making a decision. Jesse Manma March. Jesse Manmakaris asks if there's any evidence that taking more than 5 grams per day has any advantage. I will let Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, author of more than 200 papers on muscle building, answer this one. Think of it like a glass. If you're going to fill up your glass with water, once that glass is filled, you can keep pouring the water, but you're not going to get any benefits. You're not going to be able to drink more water once your glass is filled. And ultimately, once your creatine stores are filled, taking more creatine through supplemental means is not going to further saturate your creatine stores. So no, there's no good reason to believe more than five grams per day will confer any additional advantage. What is true is that creatine's effect is cumulative, not acute. That means you need to take that five grams per day for a long time to achieve the saturation effect in your muscles. You won't max out your creatine stores the minute you take five grams. NPN4909 asks about the loading and maintenance phases of creatine. Loading refers to taking higher doses of creatine than the recommended 5 grams for a limited time, usually 20 to 25 grams per day for up to 7 days. There is evidence that loading like this increases storage of creatine in the muscles, but it's just a timing issue. Someone taking just 5 grams per day will saturate their intramuscular creatine stores eventually, just more slowly than someone who loads. So if you're relying on the advantage creatine will give you in a forthcoming race or competition, maybe loading might make sense. Otherwise, there's no real point and you may as well stick to 5 grams per day, particularly as dosages more than 10 grams per day seem to be associated with explosive power from your backside rather than your biceps. This wonder supplement isn't just for anyone who wants an edge in their physical activity of choice. A number of studies have shown cognitive benefits from taking creatine, including short-term memory and attention. In one of these studies, taking 5 grams of creatine per day for 6 weeks resulted in improvements in short-term memory and performance on cognitive tasks. Other benefits of creatine include neuroprotective effects that is literally protecting our brain cells from dying, and cardiovascular health, with studies showing creatine supplementation can improve symptoms of atherosclerosis. None of this is to suggest that creatine is some sort of miracle supplement that can solve any or all our woes. It won't do your taxes, make your ex miss you, or help you with IKEA instructions. Fundamentally, if there are gaps in our health due to poor diet, exercise, or sleep, no supplement can paper over those cracks. These are the really big levers to pull in terms of improving our physical and mental health and the benefit that creatine provides is tiny in comparison. But if you'd like to know how creatine fared against other supplements like psyllium husk, omega-3 oils, magnesium, probiotics in my supplement tier list, click here to watch this video now.